Thank you very much for the introduction. Yeah, hello, I would like to present our research in the distributed fiber optic sensors for thermal monitoring and radio frequency thermal ablation. This work was done by uh, da uh, Dr. Daniel Tosi, and I will present it for him. Collaboration with several universities. So during the presentation, I would like to guide you through five chapters. First, I would like to explain what is thermal ablation and uh, where is it used and why we want to monitor it online. And then I will show you several techniques and at the end there will be a conclusion. So let's start with thermal ablation. Uh, there are many treatments for cancer cells. And uh, in this uh, research, we tried to work with thermal ablation and, and especially a radio frequency thermal ablation. Tumors can have different size in a patient, for example, three to five centimeters, and they can place in different locations like uh, the lung or the kidney. And the point how to destroy tumor cells in this research is with, with heat. So uh, if you expose a temperature over 50 degrees for one minute to cancer cells, they have a high probability to die. If you do it over 60 degrees, uh, they die nearly immediately. And in this research, we use uh, radio frequency thermal uh, ablation, which means there's a needle shown schematically here on this picture, which is uh, inserted into the tumor, and the radio frequency is emitted, which um, emits heat in the cell of the patients. You can see you can see in the needle most of the temperature is alongside the needle. Only a small uh, distribution is perpendicular to it. And the important point is, if you treat cancer with uh, thermal energy, you don't want to uh, kill healthy cells. If you apply too much temperature, uh, there's a high probability to, um, to kill healthy cells. But if you apply not enough temperature, it could be that uh, cancer cells survive and spread over the body. So it's very important to measure the uh, radio frequency ablation online and use these parameters to adjust uh, the treatment. Yeah, we use different techniques. One of this is um, uh, FPG array. For this, we use an FPG array from FPGS. We mounted it on the radio frequency needle. This is actually the needle which is inserted into the tumor cell. And here is the optical fiber with five FPGs every FPG in a distance of one centimeter, an active area of 0 0.5 centimeter. And as you can see in the next picture, the temperature distribution of the ablation. So the highest impact in this case is at FPG4. You see temperatures up to 140 degrees in a 180 second uh, measurement. Of course, the FPG4, uh, 5 and 3 are apart from the highest impact point, so the temperatures are not too high. And FPG1 and 2 are up to two centimeter, uh, 3 centimeters away from the impact point. And the interesting point is that uh, at the impact point, the temperature change is 1.5 degrees per second. This means uh, the temperature change rapidly. And the whole system has to monitor the temperature change online. And uh, only in one centimeter distance, the temperature difference in the tumor cell can, can be up to 38 degrees. And this decides if the cells survive or are destroyed uh, forever. Yeah, on the right side, you see a picture of the thermal uh, distribution in the, in the patient, uh, in, in the liver. And as you see, after 300 seconds at FPG4, the point reached the highest temperature, 140 degrees. And let's assume the tumor has an area of one centimeter. Then after 200 seconds, you reach a point where the tumor cells, but if you do it a little bit longer, then you even kill healthy cells. So this is why it's important to, to, measure, to measure it in vivo on. Yeah, for a second measurement, we used a different technique. Like I showed before, um, alongside the ARF needle, there's a wide area of temperature. Where it's uh, perpendicular, there's a smaller area, but uh, for the case we use linear chip FPG with a small area but a higher resolution. We get a resolution of uh, 75 
micrometers in a 1.5 centimeter array. And as you can see in the picture, uh, from 0 to 1.5 millimeters, so very close to the needle, you have an increase of temperature already after one minute, uh, which is uh, the mortality threshold. But uh, after uh, 1.5 centimeters, there is nearly no temperature anymore. Uh, we tested this in polystyrol. We put the uh, liver, we cut it and put it directly into the polystyrol chamber. And we also used different techniques. In this case, a uh, lunar device, which is uh, more the gold standard of temperature of this measurement. And this here is one fiber which goes into the polystyrol, comes back and turns. And uh, so at the end, we have eight different radii where we measure the temperature of the thermal ablation. So here's the, the big picture of it. And as you see, there are eight different uh, thermal maps, which shows the distribution of the temperature alongside the radii and um, average over all temp temperature distribution. And as you see in this picture, the very close to the needle at zero, so exactly at the impact point, there's the mortality threshold already after 20% of the time. Whereas uh, one centimeter away, we even reach the um, mortality threshold anymore. Yeah, in this research, we tried different techniques, for example, the FPG array, which is low cost, but also a low resolution. The linear chip FPG, which has a very good uh, special resolution, but it needs much decoding. And uh, we also used relay scattering, which shows us good resolution. And thermal imaging was used ex vivo, whereas the first three measurement methods were used in vivo. Yeah, so at the end, we showed uh, different technologies, three with FPGs, uh, a linear chip FPGs and DTS, and we compared all of them. And we saw some very nice, interesting results and uh, some modeling. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you, ha if you have uh, any other question, I would like to answer them to you now. Thank you very much.